Hello everyone, I'm Terry, this is Blue Abroad, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please don't be afraid to like and subscribe. If you're not new here, welcome. Welcome back, I should say. In today's video, I'm going to go through the Q&A that Ed Kerno did on the Carlton Football Club Twitter page. This one was a little lighthearted. I, I really enjoyed it. Ed's a, an interesting cat. Um, I've had minimal interaction with him, and every time I've had something to say back and forth with him, it's, he's just different. He's funny. He doesn't take life too seriously, and he's a good um, he's a good character to have around the club because you combine that with his work ethic and you know his story, and I think it's a it's a great combination. So let's go through the questions. The first one was, "Hi Ed, which player would you not want to be in isolation with, and why?" And he says, "This is a tough one. I would say David Cunningham because he doesn't speak." A few people I've I've seen the notion of this a few times that he's just a, a unique character, David Cunningham. So I haven't really had any interaction with him at all, so I can't really speak from experience. But yeah, the boys seem to be um, pinpointing him as a, as a as a different cat as well. Next one: How are you keeping yourself busy during lockdown? Ed says, I've got two young kids and university to do. I love spending time with the family, to be honest. Lockdown has been good for me. And this is good perspective. If there's one thing, yes, we want our sport back. We've, we're missing our jobs, we're missing our sport, we're missing our footy, we're missing the normal things that we have come to know and love as being normal. But what we have gained is the ability to slow down, look around at what you've actually got around you and, and be grateful for that. So it, it, it seems like Ed's got the right mindset in that regard, which is really good to see. Next question, even with just one round being played this year thus far, how did you find the shorter quarter lengths? Good question. A few players and stat trackers noticed more effective disposals and goal kicking. Does that surprise you? Ed says, it didn't work for me because my disposal efficiency was ordinary. That's a good banter there. I like that he's owning that. I do like the shorter games though. It's going to allow us to play more games, which is better than training. And I personally agree. I'm all for the evolution of the sport. I'm all for making the game shorter and, and making them uh, sort of more, I guess, efficient, if that makes sense, and we'll have more games. I can also understand the notion of our great game is based on a war of attrition and you know the long games, they're long, they're sort of gladiatorial-like in the way that they're played and it's whoever can last the longest and whoever can kick that goal with... 90 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter after such a long bruising game. I do enjoy that as a, as, a, as a spectator. But when you look at our league, we have such a long break from season to season. And if we shorten the games and have more games, it might allow us to have a, a, a more footy throughout the year, which I think is better than having less games and bigger breaks each year. But again, that's just my opinion. It does come down to tradition and we as a sport and we as a country love our tradition. We don't like change, and so I can understand that. But I'm on the. I'm, I wouldn't be fussed either way. I think we're at a situation where if there's footy and it's shorter, great. If there's footy and there's less, but it's longer games, great. I think we're we're starting to move into that mindset of gratitude. So I'm not fussed either way. But it's interesting to see what Ed says about it and what the other players are saying about it. Next question: We've seen a lot of challenging times. What has been your highlight from the good? and challenging times. And Ed says, playing with my brother 100%. I can't even imagine what that would be like, running out into the MCG or any other arena for that matter. And, you know, playing with your brother, and especially, you know, I think early in the year, early in Charlie's career, I remember an Essendon game where Ed kicked it to Charlie, Charlie kicked the goal and they celebrated and it was just, you could just feel that, um, that love factor there, which was really good. Next question, hi Ed, what would have to be your favorite footy memory from last year? Ed says, good question. It would be the Fremantle game. It was my first time as captain. Dad came over and we got the win. And what a day it was. I mean, we've probably replayed that winning goal from Murph so many times. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a, a great day for us as fans and as, as Carlton people, whether you're a player or a fan or an administrator. Next question, who was your favorite player growing up? Ed says, the two Garys from Geelong, Ablett Senior and Hocking. I'm very similar to Senior, I reckon. <laughs> I reckon you are too, Ed. That's a good one. Next question. What's been your favorite win to be a part of? Ed says, the Richmond final. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Um, special day, special emotions. Um, it, was a, it was a great day to be alive, that's for sure. And a great day to be at the game as well. Very grateful for that. 
Next question. If you could pick one former Carlton player to put into the current side, who would it be? Ed says, that's a good one. Bring back the Judd man. He'd be a good fit for our midfield group. Now, gosh, can you imagine if... So the end of Judd's career overlapped with the start of Cripps' career. And, you know, can you imagine if we just had them at their peak together? Oh, it would be something else. Because we've obviously been crying out for that midfield help. It would allow other guys to play a lot better footy. Uh, it would be pretty special. But that's now for the history books and, you know, for the YouTubers and for the media people to do all the what ifs and what would happen. So, yeah. Next question. Who is the best in the gym, Ed? Ed says three votes Levi, two votes Liam Jones, and one vote Fraser Phillips. Not sure about Fraser Phillips, but he's all skin and bones. I like the, I like the banter there, but... I'm not surprised by Levi. Liam Jones is a very powerful and explosive athlete as well. And that's been something that's been said all throughout his career. Even when he was struggling, I remember Mick Polthouse was saying he was easily the most explosive player he'd seen. He was the best trainer he'd ever seen. And so that's not a surprise to me at all. Next question. Who's the most annoying teammate? Ed says, I don't find any of them annoying. They find me annoying. I enjoy annoying them. <laughs> Having said that, Charlie's pretty bad. Yeah, I've seen that in a few of the Blues banter and a few of the little interviews on the podcast and whatnot that Ed is, is quite annoying. But yeah, it's good. You need all these different characters in a footy club, whether it's at local level or AFL level. So yeah, that's, that's good to see there. Next question. Who's a player you've tried to model your game on at the beginning of your career? Ed says, to be honest, because I couldn't really get a gig, I was trying to convince coaches that I was different and to stick with me. I've always liked guys who could get the ball out of packs, tackle well and run. It's a good point. Overlooked and he got in you know, a little bit later than, uh, than most, but he made it work. He put the work ethic in and that's what stood out over time. The longevity is a testament to that. So love Ed's story. Uh, Yusuf asks, Yusuf Nurkic is number one fan asks, hey Ed, how's Charlie going in his rehab? Can't wait to see you and him out there playing together again. Ed says, don't know, I'm isolating. So yeah, good question. Silly question answered with a silly answer. I love it. I rate it. And, and that's that. What did you think? Did you uh, did you find a lighter side to this? I did. I, it's good. I, like I said in the last one, this is important for the club to keep doing this sort of thing, um, particularly with the players. Um, you know, they've got the podcast out as well. So I've been enjoying that. And it's just, again, it's so important at times like this to just stick together and have that fan engagement out there from the club. So kudos to all the media team out there uh, and kudos to everyone putting this together and to the players and the staff that are getting involved with it and, and, and adapting. And uh, that'll do for this video. As always, like, subscribe, and go the mighty blue boys and girls.